welcome to another video that will address the coloration of our leaves on our orchids. We have some orchids in our collection that go a beautiful color red, as they say, red leaves. But you can see in my examples, uh, red is not exactly the color that's being represented here. I would say it's more on a burgundy brown. <laughs> These leaves are not dead. And that's what I want to talk about today with you. I have a video that addresses the subject of anthocyanin, where some of this was the subject matter as well, but that belonged to the orchid lingo series. And sometimes anthocyanin is something that we look at and say, yep, everything's fine, or whoops, the orchid is stressed, and then we react and respond accordingly. So in the same manner as I was addressing in the previous video about yellow leaves on our orchids, in this video, I'm going to address the burgundy, the purple, or the reddish leaves that we get on our orchids as well pretty much break it down in a similar fashion. Because there's also many factors as to why an orchid is doing what it is doing, starting with the species itself determines the leaf color being adequate in its shade because of how the species has its characteristics or getting far too dark for its shade, and then there's trouble. So on the left, I have my Myrmecophila divicinus, then I have Renanthera monachica on the right, and then in the middle, I've got Ocoglossum kimberlianum, <laughs> and won't fit into the frame all the way. So these orchids would all have green leaves if they didn't have that much light exposure. I am here in southern Spain. My natural light is pretty intense, and then I push the orchids a little further to see how much they can take. When I say I need high light in order for my orchid to bloom, it probably isn't the same intensity as with artificial light. So if you have been on my channel for a while, you might have noticed that some of my leaves are yellower and some of my leaves are much darker. If you grow the same orchid and say, wow, mine is somewhat still on the green side or mine still has some freckles. And that's absolutely fine. If I pull all these orchids back and give them less light or put them into what I would consider shade, not even bright shade, there would still be a tinge of purple and red, but more green would come forth. So in analyzing why my orchid leaves are doing what they're doing is also to understand your light levels, your environment, even the artificial light, how close is the orchid to the artificial light or how far away is it? Is it just getting residual light? But another aspect would be a nutrient deficiency, for example, lack of phosphorus or magnesium. If these elements are not able to be absorbed evenly distributed throughout the orchid, then the leaves will start to show signs of anthocyanin because these two elements are responsible for moving the sugars around the structures of the orchid, which in turn are very much needed for the production of chlorophyll. Having a deficiency in phosphorus and magnesium, usually the older leaves of any structures would display reddening first before new leaves do. This is because the orchid directs its nutrients to the younger growths as that is the future of the plant and subsequently leaving the older structures to take the hit. So the solution to this issue would be either to do a magnesium soak to counteract the deficiency, or just use a balanced fertilizer, NPK balanced fertilizer. Doesn't have to be orchid specific, use it at quarter strength, but make sure that there is a little bit more phosphorus in that fertilizer so that the deficiency can be balanced out. And when we were talking about nutrients not being able to be taken up, it could be that the potting media is degrading, which lowers the pH, which then, as a consequence, is not allowing phosphorus or magnesium to be absorbed. Both of the nutrients are vital for the distribution of sugars to all cells in the orchid, including spikes, and their optimal absorption pH is 6.5. Any kind of degrading potting media could be too acidic for these elements to be absorbed. So to solve that problem, it's pretty simple. If you're growing in organic media, you may need to consider repotting straight away, or if you don't have time to repot, up the pH to about 6.8 so that the acidity in the pot will bring the pH down to a 6.5 level, which then is adequate for the absorption of magnesium and phosphorus. Another thing to be mindful of is your temperature exposure and cold temperature exposure will result in the leaves reddening. It is the visual sign that shows the breakdown of chlorophyll if the orchid was exposed to temperatures too low for its liking. Not only that though, 
Any cool draft of wind would have similar results if the orchid is exposed to those conditions for an extended period of time. Extended period of time also being relative depending on how cool that draft of wind was based on your hemisphere, your location, where you're growing, if you're opening a window. The occasional opening of a window is important, especially for refreshing the oxygen in our grow space. But do that over a course of several days without closing the window and bringing the temperature back up to how it's supposed to be, it can be that some orchids are going to object to that. In my case, as I grow 80% of the time outdoors, it is the time of year now where I am so tempted to leave my orchids outside because I've been carrying them in and out on the daily since mid-November, but it's still a volatile time of year for a temperature drop to suddenly happen despite the forecast saying it's not going to happen. And then I can be in serious trouble because that could be a period of a couple of hours until the morning the sun starts to warm up the ambient air again. So to become complacent so close to getting through the winter and having gone through all the effort of protecting the orchids, this time of year can be very, very deceiving and we can drop our guard. Keep your temperature in mind. We do not want the chlorophyll to undergo temperature shock and die. There's a very, very obvious factor, as I mentioned briefly at the beginning, the high light exposure or sufficient light exposure. High light is not necessarily a bad thing as long as we don't burn the structures. The same with sufficient light. The light might be adequate because we're not burning the structures and our orchid is quite happy with the color that it's got. You see, the anthocyanin is the natural sunscreen protection. This can show also in freckles as well. It does not necessarily mean the whole leaf will turn the reddish color that you see, but at this point, the orchid is indicating that it is getting enough light. In some instances, when it comes to hybrid, it can indicate it's getting too much light, which then can be interpreted as a sign of stress. If the orchid is not removed from the high light exposure, the structure will burn. And then of course, as I mentioned previously, once we return the orchid to where there is less light exposure, the leaves will revert back to green. Now, I've touched a little bit upon the hybrid situation, freckles being okay on some orchids because it is indicating the orchid is getting enough light to bloom. And just remember with my yellow leaves video, getting freckles or getting red leaves on the orchids is not the norm for every orchid. And then there are these little spots and freckles that we might misunderstand and think that it is because the orchid is getting enough light, so that's anthocyanin, but what it actually is, is anthocyanin around scar tissue. And if there was a scale infestation or some other pest got in there and took a bite out of your orchid, and then we get the light levels up, you will see little spots of anthocyanin in certain areas of the leaves. That is not to be mistaken for adequate light. That all looks very similar. Those are just scar tissues where the chlorophyll died back and anthocyanin kicked in. And then we also have some anthocyanin around anything that could be identified as possibly a virus orchid. Anywhere where there is damage and chlorophyll is affected and dies back, anthocyanin will take its place and put the orchid into high light. That anthocyanin increases and becomes even more evident. So we were also talking about the absorption of the nutrients and if we don't have the right pH because the media was breaking down. But there's another thing about this. Absorption is necessary when it comes to watering. Without watering, there is no absorption. So improper watering is also a big, big factor. By not providing sufficient hydrations, the nutrients cannot reach the furthest point in the leaves and they start to die off. The first to die off is the chlorophyll, as mentioned previously. The leaf loses its color, turning the leaf reddish yellow, and in time, this will turn brown and get crunchy. The red, in this case, is a sign the orchid is not 100% happy. That segues straight into root loss due to too much watering, and the roots rotted, and now, again, we have no way of getting any nutrients into the orchid. Old leaves will go red, as mentioned, simply because of the characteristics of the orchid. As long as it's on an old structure, there is not a problem. There are also examples of leaves going red on a single orchid where other leaves are actually green. So I'm just showing every single example I've just mentioned in a single orchid, the Dendrobium bariota. We have old structures that have no leaves. She is exposed to extremely high light. 
we see new growths that look much greener than the old growths that still have leaves. We also see on this orchid the example of older leaves going red on older structures. But next to each other, all these factors are included. We can see bite marks and freckles and all what I've just mentioned can happen in a single orchid. So you see that the symptoms themselves are not necessarily a decline of the orchid. It can all happen in one go based on how the orchid is growing. If you are concerned about anything with your orchid looking a little too red or too dark or anything like that, and you are not sure which of the factors I have just mentioned, remove it from the light source first and foremost and check the roots. Those are the two things with all the other things I've just mentioned. If you narrow it down, if the roots are healthy, the orchid will turn a nice green again. There will be some freckles remaining, which is fine. It poses a characteristic of the orchid. And then, of course, we can address the subject of changing the fertilizer to something a little bit more balanced so that the nutrients are covered. But a stressed orchid won't produce roots either. The energy is there for conservation, so the orchid starts to shut down. And that is why I'm saying quick fix, move the orchid away from the light and check the roots. If the orchid has good roots, then everything is going to be fine. If the orchid hasn't got good roots and they have died because the media has broken down, keep the orchid in a protected light location. Do not expose it to too much light. The orchid needs to recover in order to then get some chlorophyll to the surface functioning so that it can photosynthesize again and produce new roots. Know that as well, any kind of correction of nutrient deficiency will take some time. It doesn't happen in a matter of weeks or months. It will correct itself over time, probably within a year. If you're not sure about the temperature of your leaves, how much can they handle if they're in direct sun? Just touch them and see if there's any heat. If there's any heat, then move the orchid away from the sun. If they are cool to the touch, as are mine, light levels are okay, direct sun is safe. I'm hoping that this video was helpful, especially as some of us are heading into spring summer and those of us that are moving from summer into fall into winter, it would not be a good thing to drop one's guard because we're putting our orchids under artificial light. Even the right amount of light is not going to help if there's a nutrient deficiency taking place or in worst case scenario, root loss has kicked in. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions with regards to a specific orchid of yours that you're not exactly entirely sure about. I'd be more than happy to elaborate on a case-by-case -case basis. Meanwhile, thank you so, so much for watching my video. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition. Please stay safe. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.